What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, just like every single day, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about and I'm going to be analyzing with you guys what I personally did today with my trades on the 15th of July in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade right now in the stock market. So if you enjoy this video, Video, drop a like if you enjoy this type of content consider subscribing to the channel and let's just get right into it guys so the market actually closed 12 minutes ago so we can see the S&P closed yet again above $3,000 it was up 53 cents so not much of a move at all it was up 0.02 percent at the close the Dow Jones Industrial Average which did very well on Friday and over the past couple of days here didn't do much either right it ended up closing up $27.13 up 0.1 percent the Nasdaq here up $24.50 this one did do decent today I guess you guys can say 0.3 percent is a pretty decent day considering you know, all the other days that we've been having being like, you know, 1%, 1.5% days, I guess you can say since those are spectacular days, 0.3% is pretty decent, right? And you guys can see we hit a high today at about 79.92. And if we go back to the 180 uh, four hour chart very quickly, you can see that that is an all time high. So despite the market being a bit flat today, not much movement across the S&P and the Dow, the NASDAQ was able to hit an all time high today, $8 shy of that milestone being $8,000. And drop a comment down below. Do you guys think we're we're going to get to $8,000 tomorrow. Let me know. I personally think there is a very good chance we do get there. So hopping back over to the S&P, let's break down some technicals um, very, very quickly. So since we did move barely today, you know, the technicals are kind of similar to what I talked about in yesterday's video in the beginning of the video. But now we saw another day of data since even though it was... Um, you know, not much of a move, we got the consolidation, which is a good um, factor here that we want to take into account. So even though, again, we didn't really do much, we got the consolidation here on the five day, five minute that we are holding above the 180 SMA here and also above um, a resistance from yesterday's trading session or rather on Friday's trading session, right? You guys can see 3,005. Well, first of all, the first um, support that we need to hold above Above is $3,000, right? Notice how this was a resistance on the 10th of July through the 11th of July. You guys can clearly see that. We broke above it. We gapped above it that one day. I know you guys remember that. And we ended up holding that level as a new support. And from now on, we need to hold that level um, if this uptrend is going to, you know, stay intact, right? So we have that level. You know, we have 3,005. We have 3,006. So this general area, you know, the old resistances, we're holding them as new support right now, which is a very good sign in the S&P 500. Even though it didn't really do much today, we got that consolidation. We got that hold of the support, you know, from previous resistances, which is very key here. So going here to the 20 day, one hour, you guys can see, you know, we're still in the uptrend. Very, very clear. You know, we broke out of that wedge that we were talking about in yesterday's or rather, you know, this past week's video and in yesterday's video. And, um, you know, we gapped up and from there, the markets have been doing quite well, right? In particular, the S&P 500. Going back out to the 184-hour chart, you can see RSI, it is a bit overbought at this point. So if we were to pull back, um, you know, in the S&P, I wouldn't be crazily surprised. And if we pulled back again, going back to what I said a couple of seconds ago about the 3,000 to 3,005 level, you know, I would expect the S&P to hold that level as a support and then continue the rally from there if we we continue the rally from there. And let's say, you know, we break on the 20 day, one hour chart. It'll be bad news in my opinion. You know, if we break this 50 SMA, at least on a shorter term um, technical perspective here, because that has been a support over the past couple of weeks, as you guys can clearly see. So if we pull 
pull back. That'll bring the RSI down a bit on the 184 hour chart. Maybe that'll make it a bit more attractive to hop into some of these market ETFs in particular. I trade this one. Um, what is it? SPXS? No, it's SPXL, guys. I always get those two confused for some reason, but SPXL is an ETF that goes up whenever the S&P 500 is going up, right? And you guys can see this is a bit overbought. If we get that pullback, if the S&P pulls back, we'll get the pullback here. That would open up an interesting entry point. So that's the analysis on the S&P. Hopping over here to the Dow and then the NASDAQ, we have to do it in the right order, guys. I always do S&P, Dow, NASDAQ. And for some reason, I'm weird. I just stick to the same order. And it's weird if I, you know, do them differently. I don't know if you guys understand, but, um, you know, from my perspective. But anyway, um, 27,000. 364 is that all-time high. And did we actually hit that today? I think we did hit an all-time high today. I said before we didn't in the Dow, but we did hit one today in the uh, Dow Jones as well. And a lot of the same with the S&P, right? It's pretty much a consolidation here for the Dow Jones Industrial Average, right? 20-day, one hour. You guys can see the uptrend is intact. We're a bit overbought in terms of the RSI. Going back to the 184-hour chart, you know, we are very overbought bought as well. So at this point, you know, if the Dow were to pull back, right, you know, we're obviously at all time high levels, we're above, you know, all previous resistances at this point, since we're at all time highs, right, when you're at all time highs, and there's nothing really above in terms of price action price data, you know, there's not much resistance, there really is no resistance at that point. So at this point, you know, we need to see some sort of a pullback, maybe a retest at about 27,000 flat, that's what I would to look at. That's an old resistance, new support. At that point, we might be at the 50 SMA. This is also a level of support I'm looking at here on the 20 day, one hour. So these are just a couple of things I'm watching, right? Because as long as this keeps going up day after day after day, what that tells us is there is going to be a pullback eventually because the pullbacks, they always come. It's just really seeing when they come. You can't time it perfectly really ever. You know, sometimes you can, you know, a lot of the times you can, sometimes you can't, but you know, when they happen, you see the analysis and then you understand what could potentially happen next time, right? So that's the Dow, you know, NASDAQ, if we go to the NASDAQ very quickly, a $27 red day or rather green day today, not red day stocks. What are you saying? Up 0.34%. You guys, again, we hit that all time high and very similar to the S&P and the Dow. Yeah, we're at all-time highs. There's really no resistances above us. So now we have to see, are we going to continue making all-time highs or are we going to pull back and potentially test some old supports, right? Or rather old resistances as new supports, right? So at this point, you guys can clearly see on the longer-term chart, even if we go to the one-year, one-day chart very quickly, you'll be able to clearly see a level of resistance that were previous all-time highs, levels of resistance that were previous all-time highs being at $7,700. That's one. You guys can see that back in August to about um, October of 2018. The second one is at about 79-ish hundred that we recently just broke out of because we've been making all-time highs day in and day out pretty much, right? So that's the level we want to see hold for the uh, NASDAQ in the um, event of a pullback at this point, right? If we go back to the 184-hour chart, you can see we're a bit overbought, not extremely overbought like um, the S&P and the Dow were, I believe, on these time frames. Let me just double check that, right? The S&P is a bit more overbought. You guys can see that and the Dow Jones. So in terms of the 184 hour, the NASDAQ's not as overbought, but then we go to this 20 day one hour, you can see, you know, it's in need of a little bit of a pullback, maybe down to about 7960, but still it's not as crazily overbought as the Dow and the S&P, which actually, you know, is kind of interesting to me, right? Because typically, you know, when we go on these rallies, the NASDAQ is, um, not always, but sometimes I've realized over the past couple of months, the NASDAQ is the one that runs, you know, to the most overbought side because it runs typically more, you know, than the S&P and the Dow, but that's just a little insight. So that's the market update for today's video, guys. Let me know down below in the comment section. What did you think about the market today? Kind of flat. I know, you know, what are your opinions on that? What do you think the market's going to do in, the, in these next couple of days, next couple of weeks? What stocks are you watching? Let me know. So you guys saw in the title, 
you know, is this particular stock going to rebound? And this particular stock, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen it in the news, is Johnson & Johnson. And if you're not really familiar with what has happened, you know, with Johnson & Johnson, I do have a couple of notes here that I want to talk about, you know, very briefly in under 60 seconds. So Johnson & Johnson, for those of you guys that don't know, they are currently under a criminal investigation for allegedly concealing cancer risks of baby powder in one of their products. So investigation is being done to determine whether or not Johnson & Johnson lied to the public about the baby powder cancer risks. There are also several civil lawsuits against Johnson & Johnson from customers claiming their talcum baby powder has caused ovarian cancer, which is a very, very, you know, serious claim. And if that is true, that is very, very bad. You know, that's very sad for the people, you know, that are suffering from this. And from a business perspective, you know, that's very bad for Johnson & Johnson. So that's very, very bad situation, right? So Johnson & Johnson, very interestingly, you know, you can see these big, big companies, they get sued a lot. Johnson & Johnson has been sued more than 13,000 times for failing to inform customers that its talcum powder contained asbestos, which is actually what caused the stock to drop, you know, a couple months back. I'm sure a lot of you guys remember 150. We can see we were nearly at 150 and we dropped all the way to $121. So, you know, this is something huge. It seems like you know, whenever these serious claims come out against Johnson & Johnson, the stock always tanks. Again, we saw this serious claim back in a couple of months ago. It dropped like this, right? And then we ended up recovering as people started to forget about it. As the news started to fade away, we started recovering. So we got the instant drop right now. This is kind of why I'm analyzing Johnson & Johnson. You know, we have that negative news, but I'm thinking, you know, if this negative news maybe blows over, not that it's going to completely fade away because obviously there's there's lawsuits going on, but in terms of the media perspective, if there's not as much coverage on this lawsuit, on this, you know, criminal investigation in the next couple of days, maybe next couple of weeks, maybe things start to cool off, you know, this could be an entry point in Johnson & Johnson that could be very interesting, right? $134 up to $145 previous highs, that's about a 7%, and I'm looking at this as a potential swing trade, guys, because again, we've seen these things happen in the past, right? We've seen negative events, and the stock has rebounded as the news started to fade away. Again, it didn't fade away completely. It didn't go away, but as the tensions from that initial media release started to, you know, fade away a little bit, you know, the stock started to recover. So I'm thinking that could potentially happen here, and you guys can see if I actually just quickly erase all of these drawings, clear drawing set, yes, you guys can see if I draw one little trend line here, you can see at this point where we're seeing some consolidation on, John on Johnson & Johnson happens to be, you know, on the pattern that I just drew out for you guys. And it's actually a higher low from the previous. So if it were to pop here, this would be honestly just the continuation of the uptrend for Johnson & Johnson from its initial drop a couple of months ago due to the asbestos situation here. So guys, this is very, very attractive, but let's say it breaks like that. That's a different story. I'll reanalyze it at that point. That, in my opinion, would be pretty bad. And another thing about Johnson & Johnson, they are reporting earnings tomorrow. So this can heavily fluctuate the stock and really at that point, when I see what the stock does, how it reacts, I'll obviously update you guys, you know, with the, with the technical analysis. But I think, you know, that could break it off this trend that could pop it up, right? So I'm actually waiting until after earnings to potentially take a position here um, in Johnson & Johnson. That's how I personally, um, you know, view things here. I don't like gambling on earnings plays. I like hopping in after earnings. I like seeing guidance. I like seeing what the earnings were, how the stock's reacting, stuff like that. So this is a very interesting play here, guys. Again, about 7%. If it pops here, you know, that could be a really, really strong move. So Johnson & Johnson, let me know down below in the comment section, what do you guys think about this one? So, you know, let's do a trading update now. 
you know, now that I got the, uh, you know, the, the pretty much the premise of this video being Johnson & Johnson, you know, out of the way, let's talk about a trading update, what I did today. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, I actually called out UGAZ today, U-G-A-Z, literally right before it ended up going on its rally. And if you guys remembered um, yesterday, in yesterday's video on Sunday, I talked about the 1750 level on UGAZ. So let's hop here to the 20-day, one hour very quickly. You guys can see what I'm talking about. So 1730 here, this was a level roughly 1730, 1750 that you guys can see, you know, once we were able to break out of the moving average resistances here, we were able to hold that level as a new support, that old resistance as a new support. And we actually had the confirmation from the 9th of July. You guys can see we actually pulled back and retested it there and popped to our high of about $20. And today we got that pullback and we got the retest at 17 1730, 1750, that range where I was looking to see whether or not you guys was going to pop above there and potentially be in play, be a good move at that point. And if we go to the five day, five minute, you guys can see we went on a rally on you guys literally once we hit 1750. And if we go to natural gas, which is what you guys trades based upon, whenever natural gas is going up in price, you guys is going up in price. You guys can see, you know, right around that time period, you know, natural gas hit a lower low. You can see it's been downtrending over the past, um, you know, a couple of days here, really since the 12th. You guys can see from Friday up until now, we downtrended over the weekend pretty much. So you guys can see we hit a lower low. And typically when a stock's getting beaten down, beaten down, beaten down, you know, you can't really find the bottom, obviously. But when you start to see consolidation and then a spike upwards, you're, you're telling yourself, you're thinking to yourself, okay, this could be the bottom since we hit a lower low. You know, the next pattern would be to start to pop back up and retest old resistances. You know, you see that bottom in the pop, you know, that's the thought that's coming to your head. And that's what I was thinking at this point. So we started to get that pop and we see, you know, on the five day, five minute, the 180 SMA resistance is the resistance that we got hit at um, this morning, literally at 9 a.m. You guys can see 244, lower low popped up. We didn't break out, which would have been extremely bullish. We started to get rejected, but this is actually after the trade has been done in terms of you guys, right? So we hit the low 238, very oversold on the RSI. We started to pop up. And if we go to the one day, one minute, you guys can see it even better, right? We started to pop up. Um, no, here it is, guys. 238, we started to pop up, and then we broke out of the 180 SMA. We hold that level. We held that level as a new support at 239, and we started to break out. This was at about 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We started to break out, and I entered into that position, guys, which is you guys, right? And if we take a look at you guys, you know, it was a very quick move. And I just happened to be, you know, on my computer doing analysis. Again, for those of you that follow me on Instagram, you saw the call out, right? So, you know, ended up hopping in, I think it was at about like 1775. Initially, we got the pop, pull back, didn't do anything because we held the 50 SMA, was being patient at that point, and then we started to fly up again. And then once we broke that resistance at $18, we hit the high at about $18.13. You know, I saw the big pump, ended up hitting, um, you know, and selling out rather at about $18.10. So you guys can see, you know, from this initial pop here at about like $17.80, um, you know, $17.85 up to about $18.10, that was about a 1.3, 1.4% profit. And you guys know I'm happy with really anything above 1%. That's very, very good in my books. And 1.3%, I locked it in, was very, very happy and didn't really do much before that, guys, to be completely honest, because again, this morning was kind of a slow morning. Honestly, I was watching the S&P this morning, actually, to see if we were going to sell off from this initial dump. I was watching SPXS, which actually, is this the one that sells off? Um, yes, it does. No, no, no. SPXS, was selling off, the S&P was selling off, and then this one was going up, right? I was watching to see this This one could have been a potential breakout if we did sell off today. We didn't get the sell off, and that didn't end up playing out, so I kind of scrapped trading for this morning, ended up hopping back on, and then made that trade that I just talked to you guys about. So, a couple that I'm watching tomorrow, we talked about Johnson & Johnson. You know, you guys is obviously one that I'm watching tomorrow again, because we saw the week close.
close that it did have. Maybe it retests 1750 if natural gas finds a support, maybe at around 240 ish. That's what I'm thinking. If we go back to natural gas, you guys can see we're roughly at that level. You know, if we find a support here and continue to pop up, you know, maybe we start a bull rally here. You know, you guys could be a very, very good play. I'm watching um, the list is here, guys. What are the other ones I'm watching? Amazon. Amazon's one that I was talking to um, a couple of people today about on my Instagram. And by the way, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, the first link is down below in the description. My username is literally Stas Surfest. So go follow me on Instagram. But we were talking about Amazon today because Amazon you know, was looking pretty interesting at $2,000. And honestly, it's looking interesting headed into the close today. So if you go in a bit closer on Amazon, you know, 20 day, one hour, you guys can see the 2000 level was a support from the 12th of July. You guys can see we successfully held that support today at $2,000. As you can see on the one day, one minute, we had a strong consolidation, literally a triple bottom before we reversed out of the 180 SMA resistance here. So we were talking on Instagram and a bunch of people on Discord were talking about it because Amazon has honestly been one of the hottest stocks, you know, in the market right now. We're right at the all time highs. It's exciting whenever a stock is running like this and everyone's talking about it. Again, I was talking about it on Instagram and Discord. You know, it was really interesting and we were seeing and talking about, you know, are we going to hold and run and continue on this rally? And since we broke out, you know, this seems like it's continuing and it closed very strongly. Ideally, I would have liked to see it close above 2022. We closed and actually got rejected at 2022 and closed at about 2020. That is, you know, not the, not the, not a bad sign really, but that just means we have to gap up tomorrow and get out of 2022, which is that resistance, right? Ideally, again, if we ran up here to 2026 and then pulled back and closed at 2023, that would have been better in my opinion, um, but that didn't end up happening. But either way, it did close very nicely on a nice little run here. So if we're going to the 10 day 30, you can see 2030. Ultimately, that is the resistance we need to break out of. And from there, the all time high, you guys probably know this is at 2050, which at this point it happened um, out of the 184 hour chart. We have to go to the one year chart and you guys can see 20. 50 on the 4th, I believe, of September based off what I'm seeing here. So Amazon, I'm watching that one very closely. Crude oil did an interesting move today. It actually broke $60, that resistance we were talking about. It was actually a new support up until today. And then we got that dip into, um, back into rather, that $50 level, that $59 level. And you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? This trend looks very bearish. You can see we hit the 61 level. That was a clear, you know, level of resistance. It was a weak spot. You know, clearly crude oil was running up for many, many days. It needed a cool off period. So, you know, we started to get moving averages, 50 SMA breaking below the 180 SMA, this green line breaking below the yellow line, which is a very bearish move. And we've just made lower lows and lower highs since then. And we broke slowly that $60 level of support and we took the huge dump, the huge leap today. So DWT, which actually trades on crude oil, is breaking out. So this one, if crude oil ends up filling the gap down to, I believe, $57, and if we see to the 184 hour, we can see if we fill down to 57 here, guys, which is the next support rather actually the 50 SMA is at about 5850. So that could be a spot we potentially hold, but especially if we break the 50 SMA 5750, 5775 is a spot I'm looking for crude oil to hold. And if we do get that sell off guys, DWT that goes up whenever crude oil is selling off and you guys can see it's breaking down right now, or rather breaking out right now, this is going to be a very, very good play. So those are just a couple that I'm watching here, guys. Um, you know, I'm really liking DWT. I'm really liking J and J, especially if this you know news blows over. Let me know what you guys think about that. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Feel free to comment whatever you guys think, whatever's on your mind, stocks, anything, you know, drop a comment, let me know. And also, if you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. I appreciate all you guys watching. Really, really do. Peace out. Take care. Have a good one.